All right, beautiful ladies. It's just three of you today. Originally, there are 10 students here, but you know, stuff happens. And there's there, the next lesson is, you know, a review for the test, but I want everybody to be here for the review. So like we talked about earlier, we're gonna talk about some lessons or some topics that you want to review. And you told me that these are the ones. Um, let's begin with the easiest. The easiest one is how to use will, go into the simple present and the present continuous for the future. So on a piece of paper at the top, I would like for you to write the future. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. A little bit. <laughs> A little bit. Jackie, you ready? Yes. All right. So look, I'm on in blue, I'm gonna write like the rules. The rules. The first thing. Let's begin with will. Everybody knows about will. What is will in the negative form? Will not. Will not or won't. Won't. Okay. After will, will not, and won't, you got to use a base verb. No verb ing. Do not use to, just a verb in its base form. And we use will, will not, won't, and the base verb A for promises. Okay, that's the first thing. You know, you know that song by um, Whitney Houston, I will always love you. It's a promise. She's making a promise to her guy. The second reason why we use will is for future facts. A future fact is something that's going to happen in the future. Period. Like there is. It's inevitable that it's going to happen. We're going to have a new president. Um, global warming will get worse. You know, things that are inevitable, future facts. I will be 26 this year. I will be 40 this year. I will get older this year. It's inevitable. We also use will for plans you make at the moment of speaking. Okay, this is usually like a, a reaction. So if, for example, if you, if you are driving home and your husband or your wife calls you and she says, oh, I'm not feeling so well, my stomach hurts. Your reaction is, ah, oh, don't worry. I'll bring you some medicine. I'll stop by the pharmacy. I will stop, I will bring you some medicine because that's a plan or that's a decision that you make at the moment of speaking. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the last thing is for predictions based on opinion. Okay, for example, I think the party will be fun. It's my opinion. No evidence, it's just an opinion. And those are the four main uses of will, will not, and won't, okay? Any questions so far? No. Okay, well, I'm, I'll, I'll give you some examples in a minute of all of this. Number two going to okay before going to you got to use the verb be okay you know is am or are if you're talking about the future i'm going to she's going to we're going to and after going to you got to use a base verb again okay tonight or for christmas I'm going to bring my family to my house. For New Year's, I'm going to visit my family in 
another city. So like those two examples say, those are plans. But these are plans you make before you speak or before you write. Okay. So if you ask, hey, teacher, or hey, Mr. Gatica, what are you doing during the summer? I already have plans for the summer. Trust me, I'm going to drink at the beach. I'm going to get drunk at the beach. That's my plan. I already decided that months ago. New Year's, you know what? During the summer, I'm going to get drunk at the beach. That's my plan. And if you ask me now, I already made this plan before you asked me. So I'm going to use going to. Mr. Gatica, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to visit my grandmother. I'm going to clean my house. I'm going to record some videos for TikTok. These are my plans. Okay? It's very different than will. When you use will to talk about plans, it's like a reaction in the moment. Going to is something more thought out, you know, something more thought out. So if somebody asks me what I'm gonna do next week, it is not, or uh, I mean, it's incorrect to say I will go to the beach. Uh, instead of that, I have to say I'm going to the beach. Yeah, yeah. That unless you don't know what you're going to do and you decide in that moment. For example, if you ask me, what are you doing this weekend? I don't know. I will probably go to the, like, in that case, you use will. If you decide something quickly, you know. But if you already had plans, Noemi, you got to use going to. Okay, okay, thanks. You're welcome. And of course, ladies, like, if in real life, if you say will, or going to, the other person is not going to know if you decided in that moment or if you already had plans. They, they just know that you have a plan. They just know that you have a plan. They don't know if it's a plan that you thought of right now or a plan that you thought of uh, a few days ago. They won't know that. And the important thing is that they know that you have a plan. So whether you, in real life, whether you decide to use will or decide to use going to, it won't make a big difference. It just depends how you want to communicate yourself. Okay. So like, Noemi, you can say, I will go to the beach or I'm going to the beach. And both are correct. But it just depends on what you want to express. Did you think of it right now or had you already thought about it? You get me? Yes. Excellent. And just like Will, you can use going to for predictions. But with these predictions, you got to have evidence. Okay. And what is evidence? Well, maybe you saw the news about something. Or maybe you saw, you read an article about something. Or maybe you, I don't know, your scientific knowledge that you have about anything. If I say it's going to rain tomorrow, I can say that because this morning I looked at my weather app and guess what it said? It said 80% chance de lluvia. It's going to rain tomorrow. It's going to rain tonight. I have my evidence, my weather app. Or maybe I go outside, I look at the clouds. They're very dark, big, dark clouds. Ah, it's going to rain tonight. It's my evidence. Okay, so if you have evidence and you want to make a prediction, use going to. Jackie, any questions? No. No. All right. The next thing. You can also use the present continuous to talk about the future. And I know that's crazy because we usually use it to talk about things happening now. I'm eating, I'm sleeping, 
I'm playing Fortnite. But you can also use it for the future if there is a future context. Now, I'm eating tacos tonight. I'm playing Fortnite with my family tomorrow. Okay. You can use the present continuous for the future as well. In Spanish, it would be weird. I'm playing Fortnite tomorrow. Estoy jugando Fortnite mañana. It's kind of very, it's kind of weird, but in English it makes sense. In, in English, you can use the present continuous for future facts. I'm sorry for future for future plans. So the present continuous is the verb be is am or and then the verb ing. Okay, and it's the same thing as going to plans you make before you speak and for predictions based on evidence. Now, some little asterisks because something is different here. This is for the near future. So if something is gonna happen soon, use the present continuous, all right? If something is gonna happen like a year, a year from now or two years from now, something that's far away, use going to. Now, you can use going to or the present continues for something that is gonna happen soon or something that's gonna happen a long time from now, but it's more common, I repeat, it's more common to use the present continuous for something in the near future. And it's more common to use going to for something in the far future. So both are correct in either case but one is more common than the other. Can you do uh, an example? Of course, of course, of course. Okay. So check this out. I can say, I'm going to play Fortnite tonight. Fortnite tonight, Fortnite tonight. It should be a song. Or I'm playing Fortnite tonight. I'm not playing Fortnite tonight. I don't play video games. But I, I teach so many kids that that's, that's all they talk about. I could also say I'm going to celebrate Christmas in Mexico City. Or I'm celebrating Christmas in Mexico City. And both of them are correct, you know? Tonight is, is very close. It's the near future. It's literally like, we're, we're, well, it's almost tonight. It's like in one hour, it will be night. And Christmas, well, it's a little farther, you know, it's the far future. We still need like seven, like six more months for Christmas. It's the far future. And like I said, we can use going to or the present continuous in both cases. But, 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 but the present continuous is more common for the near future. Okay. And going to is more common for the far future. So you can use either one in either case. But the present continuous is more common for something happening soon. And going to is more common for something happening far from now. You with me or not? Yes, teacher. All right. Yes. All right, Jackie, you with me? Yes. Yes. All right. Remember, don't be afraid to say, yeah, you can say, yeah. All right. Yes, yes, yes. And the last thing, this one is going to be a little weird. The present, the simple present. Yes, you can use a simple present for the future. It's crazy, I know. And, well, you know, the simple present, you use a verb in the present. It can be a base verb or third person verb. You know, I have an appointment, she has an appointment. 
I have a game in Charleston. She has a game in Charleston. I don't have a class tonight. She doesn't have a class tonight. You know, that's a simple present. And we use a simple present for something that's scheduled or something that's fixed. So a scheduled or fixed event, you know, like a class, like an appointment, maybe like a game, you know, those things are scheduled, they're fixed. I have a game tonight. Lupita has a game tonight. I have an appointment with my doctor this weekend. I have, not I will have, not I'm going to have, not I'm having the simple present for scheduled or fixed events, okay? So this is what I want you to do, ladies. I want you to write a sentence for each different, um, I guess you could say verb tense, you know, will, going to, present continuous and the simple present. Explain why your sentence is correct. For example, if I say, I will be 26 this year, that's my sentence. And then I can explain. This sentence is correct because it's a future fact. I'm 25 right now, and in November, I will be 26. It's going to happen no matter what, like unless I die, and hopefully that doesn't happen. It's going to happen no matter what, right? Or in 2024, Mexico will have a new president. Again, future fact. It's going to happen no matter what, unless, of course, the president dies and he needs to be replaced, or if there's a war, you know, it, it, it could change. You know, the future is always uncertain, but you know, future facts is probably like something that's gonna happen with very, 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 very high probability. Like unless somebody dies or unless it's like a crazy catastrophe, it will happen, okay? And you gotta write your sentence and then you have to explain it to the class. Go ahead. I'll give you four minutes. Mm, let's see, Jackie, tell me your sentence with will and why it is correct. I won't say your secret because it's like a promise. Like I won't talk to anyone what are you saying? All right, good, good. I won't tell your secret. I won't say your secret. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I promise. Good job. Lupita, one with going to and why it's correct. Okay, um, I'm going to visit my mother next month because is it plan I made? You already Before made the plan. Speaking? Yes. Gotcha. Cool, cool. Noemi. Present continuous. <laughs> I am visiting my parents this Saturday because it's a near future. <laughs> good, good, good. And Jackie, one with the simple present. I take piano lessons every Friday. It could be. That's like a routine. But you could you could say I have a piano lesson tomorrow. You know, because if you use every day, it's like a routine, and that's not the future anymore. That's just you know something that's established permanently. Okay. Okay. Yes. So what can you say instead of I take piano lessons every day or every Friday? I have piano lessons tomorrow. Very good. I have piano lessons tomorrow. And why is that correct? Because it's 
a class. It's a class. And, yeah. and yeah, that's it. Got you. Um, ladies, do you have any, any doubt that you'd like to express before we continue to the next topic? Uh, I wrote a sentence for simple present, but I don't know if I'm right. Um, I wrote, I must be at the airport tomorrow. I must be at the airport tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. I must be or I have to be. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, let us continue with when to use the and when not to use it. The or no the. <laughs> so in Spanish, we use el, la, los, las to generalize, no? For example, me gusta la fruta. La fruta? You're not, you're not specifying. It's just a general thing. Me encanta el calor. Okay, again, el, I don't know why el, it's not specific, but another one, me encantan los gatos, los gatos, los huelos. But in Spanish, it's normal to use el, la, los, las, to generalize. In English, you're not gonna use the to generalize, okay? Do not use the. to generalize, do not use it. Yeah, capital letters, all caps. Do not use the to generalize. So that expression, no? Me encanta las frutas is I love fruit. Me gustan los gatos is I like cats. La gente está cansada. People are tired. Okay? No the, because I'm not specifying the fruit, I'm not specifying cats, and I'm not specifying people. I can, I can specify them. I can say something like, I love the fruits, or I love the fruit that grows in Acapulco. That's, that's specific fruit, the fruit that grows in Acapulco. And in that case, I can use the. So we use the to specify. How do I know it's specific? Well, A is gonna be a relative clause. You know, like who, that, or which. Or B is going to use a preposition. In this case, I love the fruit that grows in Acapulco. I have a relative clause and even a preposition. Um, the, I like the cats. I can say, oh, sorry, I like cats. I can say, I like the cats in my neighborhood. Again, I can say the cats because it's the specific cats in my neighborhood as a preposition, okay? People are tired. The people at my job are tired. The people because it's the people at my job. It's specific. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes. Yes. All right, now that's the general rule. There are always exceptions, okay? And give me a moment to find my list of exceptions. All right, beautiful students. So do not use the, do not use the with these specific places right here, especially after at, to, in, before, after. 
do not use the with these common places, especially after the prepositions. Prep. prep yeah, I forgot how to spell. Prep. Ah, shouldn't say that. The prepositions at, to, in, before, and after. Okay. Here are the common places. Home bed, work, school, college, class, prison, and uh, something that's kind of similar to prison, jail. So in Spanish, we do say la o el. Voy al trabajo o estoy en el trabajo, en el trabajo. And people like to say, I'm in the work. <laughs> no, it's I'm at work. Estoy en la escuela. I'm at school. No, the, do not say the school or the work or la universidad, the college. Nope. I'm at work. I'm at school. I'm at home. I'm in college. I'm in class, my uncle is in prison, my uncle is in jail. Don't use the with these common places. Okay, ladies? Okay. All yes. Right. Now, but you are gonna use the with these common places. Use the with these common places especially after the prepositions at and to at and to here are the places the office, the factory, the store, the mall, the gym, the library, the park, the pool, the post office, the bank. Now, I know you're probably thinking in your brain, why is it okay to use the with these places and not with these places? I wish I had an answer to that. But the only thing that I can say is that it's just the way it is. Whoever decided to make it like this succeeded. It's like this and that's it. There is no reason why this has the and this doesn't have the. It's just the way it is, is what's globally accepted. Okay, ladies, I know it can be a little, it can be a pain, but it is what it is. Um, especially when you say in both cases, it's after at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At and to. So just mm -hmm. remember, estoy en la oficina, I'm at the office. Estoy en el trabajo, I'm at work. Even if your job is in an office, <laughs> if you're going to use the office, say the. If you're going to use work, don't use the. I'm at work, I'm at the office. Okay? Jackie, does that help? Yes. All right. Lupita, no have any questions? No, I'm just writing down. Okay. 
I'll give you a few seconds to write. Noemi, when you're ready, let me know, please. I like that. I like that. Good question. Good question. Well, let's continue on with the next topic, the present perfect and the present perfect continuous. <laughs> The present perfect simple versus the present perfect continuous. Now, it's not necessary to call it the present perfect simple. You can just call it the present perfect. But because we are comparing, I want to specify that one is simple and that one is continuous. The difference between a simple and a continuous verb is that the continuous verb has the verb be and the verb ing. Under them, I'll write the formulas so you can have them in your notebook if you'd like. The present perfect, the formula is have or has plus the past participle. Ladies, can you, can you see this or it's too small? For me, it's too small. <laughs> okay. What about this? Or it's still too, still too small? It's better. All right. That means it's too small here. I'll make it bigger. Okay, so that's the formula for the present perfect simple. And this is the formula for the present perfect continuous. Have or has plus been plus the verb ing. So two verbs make one time. The time is the present perfect simple. Two verbs make one verb tense. Let me repeat it. Two verbs make one verb tense. The tense is different than a verb. A tense is like Simple present, simple past, future simple, things like that. And the verb is like a verb form. Is it a base form? Is it third person singular form, past participle form? So two verbs make a verb tense in the present perfect simple. Three verbs make the verb tense for the present perfect continuous. That's the first thing that you can do or the first obvious thing you can see to distinguish the two, two verbs and three verbs. In the continuous form, like I said, you use the verb be and the verb ing. The simple form, you don't. Now, what is the difference? What is the difference? Well, um, remember, these things are for unspecified times in the past. Unspecified times in the past, in the past, or unfinished events or actions. That's something that both things share. Both things are unspecified times in the past. That means ambiguous, and they're both unfinished. They're both unfinished. Now, the only difference, the only noticeable, noticeable difference between the simple present, the present perfect simple and the present perfect continuous is that the simple present continuous focuses on the process. And the present perfect simple focuses on the result. Process result, process result, process result. For example, look at these muscles. I haven't gone to the gym in one week, but I've been going to the gym for three months. That's my process. My results is I've gained four pounds in muscle. 
okay? So like I said, this is my process. I've been going to the gym for three months. This is my process. My result, I've gained four pounds in muscle. Okay, so you cannot use the present perfect simple for results. You got to use the present perfect continuous for the process and the present perfect simple for the results. Let me give you um, another example and you got to complete it. I read every day for one year. I read 24 books in total. There are two verbs, read and read. Which one is present perfect continuous? The first one or the second one? Which one is the process? The first read or the second read? The first. First read. So how, how do I make this verb? I... I've been reading. Very good. I've been reading every day for one year. And this would be what? I I read. Yeah. The process and the result. I've been reading every day for one year. I've read 24 books in total. Okay. And that's the big difference between the both of them, Noemi. Would you like one more example, Noemi? Yes, please. Okay, okay, okay. I pass three exams with 100s. I take English classes for three months. Which one is the process, ladies? The first sentence or the second sentence? The second. Uh-huh, good. So how do I correct this? How do I make this sentence complete? I uh, I have been taken. Very good. And this would be what? I passed. Very good. I passed three exams with hundreds and I've been taking English classes for three months. Okay. Okay. Remy, I think you, you got a good grip on this. Thanks. I'll write those. <laughs> All right. Lupita, tell me, what's your question? On the the last one, I think I, well, I said I took, could it be? I took English classes for three months. Ah, if you say I've took, first, that's wrong because it's take, took, taken. Um... So no, but even if you said I've taken English classes for three months, um, that sounds like you're finished. It is not like a process anymore, you know? Okay. 
So I've been taking English classes. That means I started in the past and it continues into the present. Okay. I guess that's another difference. Let, let me write that for you. The process, the, the present perfect continuous, you started in the past and continue on to the present. Like it's still something that you do. If I say I've been going to the gym for three months, yes, I started three months ago, but now I still actively go to the gym. I've been reading every day for one year. I've been reading for one year and I still read today. In the present perfect simple, since it's like a result, you might be finished, might not. Or let's see, let's, let's see, might be finished, but could have the intention to do it again, okay? So I've read 24 books in total, but I might read 25, I might read 26. You could have the intention to do it again. That's another big difference between both of them, okay, Lupita? Yes, thank you. And remember, take, took, taken. Gotta use the past participle. All right. Noemi, did you finish writing this? Yes, sir. Thanks. All right. Ladies, well, I got to go so I can prepare for my next class. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed it. Okay. I did too. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. See you on Monday. See you. See you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.